What's up, YTPC? Uncle Willie coming to you from the coop. I am smoking my New Grange Spigot, shaped B10. Beautiful sandblast on this thing. And the stem is just, it's hard to see. It's just gorgeous, crazy gorgeous. Beautiful pipe. So, <clears throat> in it, happens to be some 1792 flake that I've already prepared ahead of time. So I'm doing a VR for Steve over at Smoking Cardboard. He's celebrating 1,000 subs, well-deserved. Steve's got a great channel. Go over, check him out. Like I say, <clears throat> he's doing a giveaway, a gall. And <laughs> as, as most of you know, when I do a gall, I always say, if I win, pay the prize forward or backwards or whatever, you know, I'll do the VR, but I don't want the prize. Well, Steve made it clear that if you participate, you're gonna get the prize, excuse me, if you win. So Steve, I'll take the pipe. If I win, put my name in the hat for the pipe. He's giving away something. And it's kind of up to the uh, winner of what they want. So I'll take the pipe. He asked a question. What have you learned from the YTPC? Well, I'm just going to touch on a couple things because I've learned a lot. Being a presenter, I learned... I learned how easy it was for people to encourage me to become a presenter. My first YTP, YTPC meetup was uh, over a year ago, and it was a pretty good sized meetup. I was a non-presenter at the time, but I knew the presenters that were there, and talking with them, it made it easy for me to ease into the presenting part of the YTPC. And I encourage all of you to make videos. And I mean, let's face it. How many people don't, don't like looking like a fool sitting in your backyard talking to your phone? Your neighbors look out the window and see you out here talking to your phone and they're like, what the hell is he up to? Keep them guessing. So anyway, <clears throat> one of the first things I learned from the YTPC, and it was before I even started using a Zippo to, this was a couple years ago, Matches 860. He had a method to keep his lighter full without overfilling it and not to run out of fluid. And that is if you take like every two days, put five seconds worth of fuel in your lighter, you won't run out. And that's been time tested to be true. So now that I'm using a Zippo, if I'm using one for a week, every every two or three days, usually every two days, I'll flip it over, squeeze, and count to five, and put it back together, and I haven't run out of fuel yet. 
So that was one of the first things I've learned from the YTPC. One of the other things I learned, never thought about it, and what I'm smoking is a uh, product of what I'm getting ready to tell you. I sent some samples out a while back, <clears throat> some flake and some plug. And old Corvette Jim, he had I sent him some. And he did it, a video of reviewing the, and it was 1792 flake cob plug. Well, he had a grinder. His had a crank on the top. He took it, oh, put the flake on top, ground it up, and then you open the bottom part. and the product is in the bottom. Well, I thought that was just the coolest thing. I have seen grinders before, but for years I haven't had a use, up, use for them. I haven't needed to grind any, say, bud or anything like that for a while. I don't partake anymore, so I didn't need one. But after seeing Jim, seeing Jim using his, I went and got one. Well, I bought one that had the crank on it. Well, my crank broke. So I took, went, took it back up there and the guy exchanged it and gave me this one. He didn't have any more with the crank on it. And so, and I've used this one. I took a couple flakes the other day, ground them up, and that's what's in here. Some flake that I already prepared Thanks to Corvette Jim. So that's two things that I've learned from the YTPC. The list goes on. I mean, there's there's a lot of things, but I'm sure you don't want me to do a 20 minute video of all that. A couple of items would be sufficient because I don't want to tell all my secrets in case somebody else wants to use them in their video. So, that's a couple things that I've learned from the YTPC. I hope that satisfies your question, Steve. Again, well-deserved, thousand subs. I'm almost halfway there. My numbers are growing and uh, I think I'll get there one day. Might not be anytime soon, but as long as I keep participating, I think that one day I'll have a thousand subs and we'll celebrate that. But I might be doing something at 500. I'm like 12 away, so I'm not sure yet. But anyway, that's my VR for Steve at Smoking Cardboard. And now, I want to fill you in on some, uh, Sunday was not such a fun day for Uncle Willie. The wife and I left yesterday. We were heading over to our storage unit to pick up some things and to put some things in there. You know, we switch out different season stuff and whatever. Well, on the way there, I got about two miles away from the house my low fuel light came on, which I knew I had to get gas. And then a half a mile after that came on, a sign came on my dashboard that said temperature, engine temperature too hot. And the car cut off. So I coasted up into a church parking lot that just happened to be there. So I pulled into the church parking lot and we couldn't get the car started back up. I sit there for a while and, and let it cool down. It, something happened, it was a sensor or something. But while we were sitting there and I tried to start it, I was getting this pulsating sound of like a motor running and then a click, like uh, click, uh, click, uh, click. 
couldn't figure out what that was. It sounded like it was coming from around the fuse box area. When I got out and lifted the hood, it sounded like it was coming from the other side under the hood. So I couldn't figure out what that was, why it was doing it. Well, I went around to, to the, open the hatch to see if I had my jumper cables because I called my son-in-law to come over and give me a jump or whatever, you know, to try to get it started. But when I walked around the back of my car, my windshield wiper fluid on the back, that's what the motor was zzz, 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 squirting the wiper fluid down on my back glass. So I pulled the fuse out and it kept going. Well, obviously I pulled the wrong fuse. My wife told me what number it was from looking at my owner's manual. And I think I pulled the fuse for the wiper motor, not the washer motor. So finally it stopped. The son-in-law came, we took, it couldn't, it wouldn't start by jumping it. So we took the battery out and went up to uh, AutoZone, which was not even a half a mile away. Like I said, we got everything close by with, for everything. But well, the, the battery was a, a AutoZone battery and we have Advanced Auto and then across the street is AutoZone. So we went to AutoZone, they checked the battery and said the battery was good. So we went back, put it back in, still wouldn't jump. I was hoping that unhooking the battery would reset whatever was wrong. Well, it didn't. So he gave us a ride home and I made a sign because it had signs in the church parking lot that if you parked there, they would tow you. So I made a sign and put in my windshield that I was broke down, please do not tow. I'll, I'll move the car on Monday, today. So they didn't tow my car, thank God. We have roadside assistance with our insurance. So my wife got that set up this morning before I got up and uh, she called the insurance company, got it set up, they have roadside assistance. So I met them up there to to tow, tow the car over to the dealer, to the Jeep dealer, where they'll do the work. Hopefully it's not gonna be an arm and a leg, but when it comes to electrical products, you're at their mercy, especially if you don't have tools and time and a garage and know what you're doing, you're at their mercy. So, the guy told my wife, he said, the, the, the soonest I can get it in here is on Thursday. So I was like, well, we'll just go ahead and tow it over there. And he said, you can bring it on over, but we can't get to it for a couple of days, you know. So that way we didn't have to tow it home and then tow it over there because it wouldn't start. So the tow truck is supposed to be there. We, I left here at 10 o'clock. They said we'd be there within the hour. So I went on over to the to my vehicle, and like I said, it was still there. I'm sitting there, an hour goes by, 11 o'clock, they text me again and said, the technician was delayed, we'll be there in 48 minutes. Well, they were there in 68 minutes. They said they'd be there at 11.48. They were there at about 10 after 12. So we hooked it up, and he put it on the, on the top, on the flatbed, the roll back, whatever. Took it to the dealer. So I'm standing in there talking to the guy, and he says, the soonest I can get it in to look at it is next Tuesday. And I'm like, well, what happened to Thursday? So you talked to my wife this morning and said you could get it in first thing Thursday morning. So he's like, let me do something. So he types in some stuff and all, whatever. He's like, I did something I'm not supposed to do, but I got you to go in first thing Thursday morning. Well, my thought was, 
what he did that he wasn't supposed to do was give me the right time that he had told us that he would do it. He said he would do it Thursday. Then he says it's going to be Tuesday. So then he switched it back to to, to the Thursday. So I think what he meant was he's doing what he's supposed to do, but he's not supposed to do what he's supposed to do. You know what I mean? So I'm like I say, I'm at their mercy. I don't know what. So for the diagnostic, it's $160. The last time I had to take it in there for a few, for a uh, hood sensor for my own off switch thing that where the vehicle cuts off and it's in traffic, that wasn't working. Well, the diagnostic was 120 then. That's only been like six months ago. Now the diagnostic is 160. The only good thing is when they call me and tell me what the problem is and if I have them go ahead and fix it, that 160 goes towards whatever the parts and labor are to do the fix. So fingers crossed and prayers that it's only gonna be a sensor of some sort that's not gonna be expensive because the tow truck driver tried to jump it and he said a lot of times when, when this electric problem creates like that, it's the alternator. And of course the alternator is down underneath everything where you probably got to take half the engine apart to get to it. So it's probably going to be, if it's the alternator, it's going to be a thousand dollars or more, I'm sure. So there we are. We couldn't get the vehicle started and everything yesterday and my son-in-law <laughs> he tried to make light of the situation with me you know and he was like well at least you got content for your youtube channel tomorrow <laughs> i said dude i already got content for tomorrow i got a vr that i was gonna do so instead of doing two videos i just figured i would make this one and the vr but do the vr first so that way if steve sees what he wants to see he don't have to watch the rest of it unless he wants to like you if you're still here it's because you wanted to but i do have some new subscribers that i will thank tomorrow I don't have my little notebook with their names in it, but there was like four over the weekend and they and YouTube showed me their names. But I thank each and every one of you, new and old subscribers, for the new ones for joining in and for the old ones to keep continuing to watch. I appreciate it very much. And that's all I got for today. Of course, here we are another 20 minutes of your life you'll never get back so with that being said if you stay ready you don't have to get ready and remember until next time you know what to do stuff them and puff them <laughs>